It's six o'clock on Saturday, the 12th of October, 2019. Good evening and thank you for tuning in to the English edition of Aura News. My name is Oliver, bringing you the only daily update of the local Albanian news translated into English. While we wait just a few more days before a decision by Brussels to open up negotiations for Albania, Prime Minister Edi Rama is apparently not so optimistic that there will be a positive response from the European Union countries. In an interview with the Irish Times, the ruling majority is convinced that the decision by Albania on the Council of European Union relates to the interactions of the Union countries themselves, not to what our country has done. Am I optimistic? No, Rama told the Irish Times. Albania and North Macedonia have strong support from Brussels, which wants to reward them for launching long-awaited reforms. There is not much to be optimistic about with what's going on in Europe today. I'm optimistic about the future of the country, but not about what will happen next week. We are collateral damage. When there is a bombing somewhere and a kindergarten gets hit, we are the kindergarten, said Rama. The Prime Minister acknowledged that the EU, that Albania knows full well that the integration into the European Union is a long shot and can take many more years, stating, we are not seeking to be EU members next week. We know we can't do it without a constitutional court. We are just looking to start accession talks, which can take maybe 10 years or so. After that, then they can judge us. After 10 years, it will be like another country and we will have a state that works completely differently. But unlike the head of government, according to the Irish Times, the Democratic Party leader, losing Basha, still has hope that the EU will open up negotiations for Albania on October 18th. But the opposition leader does not hesitate to accuse the Rama government of their links to crime and impunity. Albania is probably the first country in modern history without a Supreme Court, without a constitutional court, without a general prosecutor, with a parliament of unfilled seats, and with a prime minister that rules by decree and not subject to any institutional limit of power, Basha told the Irish Times. Despite the position taken by the majority in opposition, France, the Netherlands, and Denmark are the three critical countries needed for the opening of negotiations with Albania, but according to them, our country still has a lot of work to do in the judicial system and the electoral reform before they can approve their vote. Well, if you've seen the riverbanks in Albania, you've probably noticed that they're becoming dumping grounds for people's garbage, but not only have they been transformed into solid waste disposal sites, They've actually been turned into areas of increasing environmental hazards where the animals won't even go anymore. Now our northern neighbor, Montenegro, is accusing Albania of polluting a lake just a few days ago. After inspections by the Minister of Environment, Blendy Closey, it now seems that officials are accepting culpability for the situation, which has already taken on scandalous proportions. Just 10 days ago, buried chicken carcasses along a river somewhere resurfaced when recent rainfall swept them into a river and carried them out to the Adriatic Sea. All of this following the announcement of, of an environmental disaster that occurred in the Buna River along with nearby restricted zones by the National Agency of Protected Areas where a working group was set up which throughout the day had witnessed the absorption of, of a considerable number of deceased chickens washing up near the river. Today, extensive research into the improvement of hygienic conditions in these contaminated areas identifies human actions as the primary cause of the environmental destruction. And according to the minister, the perpetrators will be punished under the new penal code. Skodra's district police have launched an investigation to find out the cause of this environmental crime. A crime like this is not only, not only does it warrant a fine, rather, but also a prison sentence, said Closey. Skodra's district police are reportedly assisting environmental agencies and have initiated an investigation to find the person who polluted the Buna River. This environmental crime under the penal code is not just, a, is not just subject to fines, but it is an act punishable under the law. Under the new penal code, any determined amount of pollution which causes or is likely to cause severe damage to air quality, soil, water, animals, or plants is punishable by a fine or up to five years in prison. Furthermore, any act of polluting according to the penal code that is likely to cause serious harm to human health is punishable by law from two to 10 years behind bars. Moving on now, three more residents in the New Ring Road area have been arrested by police after being accused of blocking Theodore Keiko Street in protest. 27-year-old Edward Fahati, 56-year-old rather Tomar Jata, and 54-year-old Rujdi Datsi 
all three of them residents of the austere area were placed under arrest. The three detainees are being charged with organizing and participating in illegal gatherings and manifestations, violating public peace, and obstructing the flow of traffic. Following the arrest, the Democratic Party has subsequently indicted Tirana police chiefs, claiming officers had violated protesters. The DP demands that prosecutor's office investigates the police officers after claiming they engage, engaged in actions aimed to flagrantly rally the protesters, even though the protesters had already requested permission to hold a peaceful rally. The DP has filed a lawsuit against the state police where they claim that for 365 days, officers have been behaving like a gang. There is a robbery going on at a cost of 20 million euros per kilometer. Police should prosecute the perpetrators of this robbery and stop the extortion and robbing of Albanian citizens, said Strasmiri. Dozens of police officers committed a crime last night against journalists in the media. They were subjected to physical and psychological violence and their film materials were destroyed. They were just doing their job reporting on the protest, said another DP representative, Albana Vokshi. They must identify every police officer who has raised their hand against the press. We have already sent all the evidence to the prosecutor's office based on the violations by police against citizens and those in the media. Some of the footage was violently destroyed by police. Some is still left, but I'm sure if the prosecution has the will, it can then find others who were witnesses too, said Oriola Pampuri. It's not the first time where an operation to arrest protesters of the New Ring Road has taken place. Just a few days ago, three other protesters were arrested on the same charges. Their arrest prompted a reaction by the Steery residents who held a rally in front of the police station where some of the incidents occurred. Nevertheless, the new amendments to the penal code provide that any act to impede traffic flow merits a three-year prison sentence. The first three detainees were expected to appear before a Toronto court this Saturday, but now court judges have decided to rather communicate their security measures on Sunday. Next up tonight, the improvement of trade relations between Albania and neighboring Kosovo can only be achieved with a simplified custom system. This, according to the head of the Albanian exporters, Alban Zusi, who says that attention must be paid to small and medium-sized medium businesses, rather, which should only be equipped with a customs declaration as they travel within Albania. According to him, the cost of small businesses are very high, and this, in turn, hampers trade. In Kosovo, Albin Kurti's election victory is seen with optimism by Albanian exporters to resolve trade problems. The imposition of a tax on Serbian goods has contributed to the increase in trade between Albania and Kosovo. During the last nine months of this year, 21.1 billion lek was exported to Kosovo. That is 5 billion more compared to the same period just a year ago. And finally tonight, the general nursing program has been an absolute favorite for graduates this year. This news is just coming out of the recent census data, according to which out of 980 quotas, that is that this program had in seven faculties around the country, only 22 of them were left available for the third round. This nursing program has also been quite successful in district universities, wherein many of them, such as in Škoder, Vlora, Korcha, Duris, and Elbasan, all sites have become full. The reasons relate to the interest that many European countries have shown in this profession. But for the third round, there are still free quotas at several of the universities around the country. In the first two rounds, a total of 19,200 students were enrolled, expecting to begin the academic year on October 14th. Others who have not yet secured a branch have also the option of completing the AF form. Branches with a low number of registrations are mainly those affected by the 7.5 grade set by the Ministry of Education in the field of teaching. All in all, there are approximately 78 study programs offered around the country and a total of five faculties at risk of being closed. And that's the news across the country today. Thank you so much for watching our English edition this evening, and be sure to join us again every Monday to Saturday at 6 p.m. for the latest news from Albania. Once again, on behalf of Vora News, thank you, and have a great night.